got one of those calls you know, early one morning from a friend and contact in the embassy. He said, you know, an embassy car is coming, you know, pack the family into the car, only have one bag and, and get ready to go. My mother told me one story how, you know, the Viet Cong were coming after us and we had to just lie down and feign death, basically. We, she told me that she covered all of us in other people's blood. If I look back, that's probably one of the most dangerous part of my life because we see death every second we're on that boat. My job was just scoop the water out all day long. Under the fifth day, and uh, I stopped passing out. It's got to eat for five days. An estimated million and a half Vietnamese have migrated to the United States since the end of the war, often at great personal and professional sacrifice. But for most first-generation Vietnamese Americans, there is little interest in coming back save to visit relatives. But for a younger generation of Vietnamese Americans, who have little reference to either the war or the communist takeover, the draw of the new economy and the old culture is creating a reverse diaspora. I wouldn't say my parents were, you know, uh, jumping for joy when they heard that I was interested in, in spending more time in Vietnam. After fleeing Vietnam with his family when he was two, Henry Nguyen's parents worked multiple and often menial jobs as refugees in Northern Virginia in pursuit of the American dream for their children. Playing in rock bands and working at McDonald's, Henry's came true by going to Harvard and earning his medical degree and MBA at Northwestern. Thank you. Welcome to McDonald's. But Henry, growing up in Fairfax, Virginia, you actually worked at a McDonald's? Yeah, yeah. Really? Just part-time on the summer. You know, like, it's every kid's, like, first summer job, right? <laughs> Since moving back to Vietnam full-time 12 years ago, he's now an owner of the first McDonald's in Vietnam, the local pro basketball team. And runs one of the country's largest venture capital funds, as a VC, an ironic twist on the wartime shorthand for the Viet Cong guerrillas, which overthrew his South Vietnam homeland. Yeah, but I want to make sure people understand that means venture capitalist. <laughs> and in some ways, it's funny because even here, you could argue that capitalism, because of socialist ideology, was kind of a dirty word. But fundamentally, I think if, if you really look at the underlying culture and drive of people here, you know, like, it's always been very market-oriented anyway. Henry's initial motivation for coming back was to better understand the Vietnamese culture he largely ignored while growing up in America. He's now married to the daughter of a former prime minister and raising his family here. What keeps him here are the professional challenges and opportunities in the new Vietnam. There's so many ways to, to really make a contribution to make the life of people here in Vietnam better, to make you know, the country better in terms of accelerating its, its development, whether it's the economy, whether it's society, etc. I can totally see the influence like from Hopper. My mother, who I am very close to, she actually flat out told me that I'm no longer her daughter if I come back to Vietnam. She has a different history from me, and I, under, I totally realized that she couldn't fathom then her daughter, you know, who she risked everything for, you know, we fled this nation. And for me, as this conscious adult, to say, okay, wait a minute, I'm gonna go back to this country that we fled from. I was really curious, and that was the reason why I came back to, to Vietnam. Quinn Pham left a comfortable, prestigious job at an art institute in California to start a gallery of her own here in Ho Chi Minh City. This is a developing nation, and there aren't many contemporary art galleries that work at this level in the country. Here, I'm actually building, I'm, I'm helping shape policy. She believes the vibrant contemporary art scene is a reflection of Vietnam's creative renaissance, as well as its economic emergence from nearly a century of colonization, war, and unification. My father was a major in the South Vietnamese Army and my wife, fathers, was uh, colonel in the Vietnamese Air Force. Tuan Titan is a colonel in the United States Army. He moved back to Vietnam as the American Defense Attaché, the U.S. military's chief representative for our new defense agreements with the Vietnamese to 
counter China's expansion efforts in the South China Sea. When I left Vietnam, I never thought I will return here uh, because the image that imprinted in my head was so deep. I pretty much looked forward to what American had to offer, and American definitely had offered a lot. And not until a few years ago, when I started work on Vietnam issue from Washington, D.C., I realized that there was an opportunity for me to serve here in my new capacity. He and his Vietnamese American wife, Tua, live in this four-story villa the U.S. maintains for its defense attaches. So, John, this is pretty nice for an army to live in. Yes, super nice. The best we ever lived in. <laughs> best you ever lived in the army, huh? Yes. Over here. Uh -huh. yeah, because we uh, host a lot of uh, foreign guests here. Many of them recognize the South Vietnamese military insignias of their parents' uh, former away. units. Uh, I displayed it proudly. My Vietnamese counterpart see it uh, here is on the American, and uh, we just talk about history. It has taken some time for the local Vietnamese to fully embrace the returning Viet Qs, as the Vietnamese Americans are known here. After nearly 40 years of tough economic times and living conditions since the war, the local Vietnamese are just now enjoying the benefits of peace and prosperity. I think people deserve it. There's hardworking people here. It's just unreal. I mean, when I first came back to Vietnam, Vicu was, um, it was a derogatory term. So, you know, Viet Cue are considered people who left Vietnam, but it's changed this perception of what, who Viet Cue are because the government here, the people here, see that we've been educated abroad. We have a more international, more global vision. We are able to bring these resources, these networks, th this knowledge into this country. And uh, they see that it's contributing to economic growth. And so there's much more support for what everybody is doing. So many people from Vietnam now travel extensively um, and reciprocally. So much more economic activity, so much, many more people, whether it's Vietnamese origin or who are not of Vietnamese origin, have come to Vietnam and done business. And, and this country has changed dramatically, socially, politically, economically, you name it. Having certain freedoms, you know, in the U.S. and then coming back here and perhaps feeling a little bit more restricted, I, um, I don't really feel we're being hindered. I, I'm just very aware. And at times, to be honest, I'm, I'm cautious. You've got this old communist ideology, but yet we've really embraced capitalism here. Take away the cultural draw. You guys being young professionals in business, is this the place to be? I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Is absolutely. There's a place to be like 10, even 10 years ago. Yeah, that's where everything started for the country. I mean, especially the stock market. Yeah. Everything yeah. started to boom. Yeah. And it's a, I think it's a land of opportunity. As much as he enjoys living and working here, there's no confusion in Colonel Tuan's mind over who he is. I'm an American officer. There's no such thing as Vietnamese American officer. It's only an American officer. Over two thirds of my life, I uh, have been uh, growing up in the United States. I'm serving the United States military. That's where I belong. I feel like my experience is not uncommon in the sense of I may have grown up in a time and I felt very isolated or, or, or separated from that identity. But now that you know I've lived here, wow, there's something special that we can be a part of, and this is still our country. For the PBS News Hour, Mike Saray in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam.